Have you ever wondered why we've not yet encountered extraterrestrial life in the universe? The vast expanse of cosmos teems with possibilities and probabilities, yet we find ourselves in a perplexing silence. This enigma, known as the Fermi Paradox, scrutinizes the contradiction between the high likelihood of alien life and the deafening lack of contact. So what's the answer? Enter the Berserker Hypothesis. Could the universe be filled with self-replicating predatory machines, hunting down life wherever it arises? Welcome to the Berserker Hypothesis. The Berserker Hypothesis suggests that the universe might be a dangerous place. A bold statement to start off, isn't it? However, this isn't a concept plucked out of a science fiction novel. It's a legitimate proposition put forth by some astronomers and scientists. So, what exactly is the Berserker Hypothesis? The idea is actually quite simple, yet its implications are staggering. Picture self-replicating machines, or berserkers as they're often called. These machines are not your everyday robots. They are capable of traversing the vast expanse of the cosmos with a single-minded mission to seek out and destroy life-bearing planets. Now, why would they do that? The hypothesis suggests that these berserkers might be the creations of an advanced alien civilization. This civilization, for reasons we may never fully understand, has decided that other life forms pose a threat. So, they've set loose their berserkers to cleanse the universe, much like the mythical Norse warriors they're named after. But why should we care? Well, the berserker hypothesis offers a chilling answer to a puzzle that has baffled scientists for decades. The Fermi Paradox. This paradox revolves around a simple question. If the universe is so big and so old, why haven't we detected any signs of extraterrestrial life? The Berserker Hypothesis suggests a terrifying answer. The stars are silent, not because life is rare, but because something is actively eliminating it. We might not have found aliens because they're hiding from these cosmic predators. Or worse, they've already been wiped out. Of course, this is all hypothetical. We have no concrete evidence of berserkers, nor of the civilizations that might have created them. But the idea serves as a stark reminder of the possibilities that exist within our vast and potentially dangerous universe. So the stars might be silent not because we're alone, but because there's a predator out there. But how would a berserker work, exactly? Well, the key to understanding this lies in the concept of von Neumann machines. Named after the brilliant mathematician and physicist John von Neumann, these are theoretical, self-replicating spacecraft. Imagine a machine that can travel through space, land on distant planets or asteroids, mine raw materials, and then use those materials to create copies of itself. It's a concept that sounds straight out of science fiction, but it's based on solid scientific principles. Now let's consider these von Neumann machines in the context of a berserker. The idea is that an advanced civilization could create these self-replicating machines with a specific mission in mind. Perhaps they want to colonize the galaxy, or maybe they want to prevent other civilizations from becoming a threat. Whatever the reason, they program these machines to travel from star system to star system, building copies of themselves as they go. Each machine would be equipped with advanced sensors and weapons, capable of detecting and eliminating any signs of advanced life it encounters. As they multiply and spread throughout the galaxy, their reach and destructive power would grow exponentially. This is the essence of the Berserker Hypothesis. A swarm of self-replicating machines spreading like a deadly virus across the cosmos, programmed to wipe out any potential threats. But it's not all doom and gloom. Remember, these machines would be following a preset program. They wouldn't be evil or malicious. They wouldn't take joy in destruction. They would simply be doing what they were designed to do. 
And that's where the real fear comes from. It's not about what these machines want. It's about what they were programmed to do. These machines, once launched, could forever change the face of the cosmos. The Berserker hypothesis, if true, has far-reaching implications. This theory, gripping as it is chilling, has the potential to reshape our understanding of the cosmos. It influences not just our search for extraterrestrial life, but also stirs up some profound philosophical and ethical questions. One of the most fascinating aspects of the Berserker hypothesis is its impact on the infamous Fermi paradox. This paradox, named after physicist Enrico Fermi, questions the contradiction between the high probability of extraterrestrial life and humanity's lack of contact with or evidence for such civilizations. If berserkers truly exist, they could be the answer to this paradox. These self-replicating machines could be wiping out civilizations before they reach a stage where they can communicate beyond their own planetary system. As a result, our galaxy might be teeming with life, but we are yet to hear from them because of these cosmic predators. The Berserker hypothesis also raises some thought-provoking ethical dilemmas. Suppose we do discover an alien civilization. Should we make contact, knowing that it could potentially alert Berserkers to their existence? Or do we remain silent, preserving their safety, but also denying ourselves the opportunity for interstellar communication and collaboration. Moreover, it forces us to ponder our place in the universe. If berserkers are real, then our survival in this vast cosmos comes into question. It brings to the forefront the fragility of life and the delicate balance on which our existence hangs. Finally, it makes us question our own actions. If we had the technology to create berserkers, would we do it? Could we become the very threat we fear? These are not just questions of science, but of morality, philosophy, and the very essence of what it means to be a sentient being. It's a chilling thought that our first contact with extraterrestrial life might be our last. The berserker hypothesis, while speculative, forces us to confront these realities making us question not just the universe around us, but also the universe within us. Of course, the Berserker hypothesis is not without its critics. Let's delve into some of the criticisms and alternative explanations that have surfaced over time. One of the most prominent critiques is the assumption that all extraterrestrial life would have the same aggressive expansionist tendencies as we humans do. Some argue that this is a limited perspective born out of a tendency to anthropomorphize and project our own behavior onto unknown entities. Another criticism is the feasibility of such a complex and resource-intensive project. Creating self-replicating interstellar killing machines is not a task to be taken lightly. It requires a level of technological sophistication that we can barely dream of, not to mention the enormous energy requirements. Critics argue that any civilization advanced enough to create berserkers would likely have also developed more efficient, less destructive ways of exploring and colonizing the cosmos. Furthermore, the berserker hypothesis assumes a certain level of uniformity among extraterrestrial civilizations. It presumes that all advanced societies would react the same way upon discovering other life forms. This seems unlikely given the vast diversity we observe even within our own species. Now let's turn our attention to some alternatives to the berserker hypothesis. The zoo hypothesis, for instance, suggests that we have not made contact with extraterrestrial civilizations because they are deliberately avoiding us, observing us like animals in a zoo. Another possibility is the transcension hypothesis which proposes that advanced civilizations eventually leave our observable universe, perhaps through black holes or other means, thus explaining their apparent absence. Lastly, we can't ignore the possibility that we are simply alone. The rare Earth hypothesis 
posits that the conditions necessary for intelligent life are so specific and rare that we might be the only game in town. Whether you find the Berserker hypothesis convincing or not, it certainly gives us a lot to think about. The universe remains a place of profound mystery. Indeed, as we've journeyed through the Berserker hypothesis, it's clear that the cosmos continues to confound and fascinate us. In our exploration, we've learned that the Berserker hypothesis offers one possible answer to the Fermi paradox, proposing that self-replicating autonomous machines are a potential explanation for the silence we encounter in our search for extraterrestrial life. We've delved into the workings of these theoretical berserkers, autonomous entities capable of consuming entire galaxies in their relentless pursuit of resources. We've also examined the implications of this hypothesis, considering the profound and somewhat unsettling consequences of a cosmos dominated by berserkers. And we've confronted critiques and alternatives to the berserker hypothesis, examining other theories that also seek to unravel the enigma of the Fermi paradox. Yet despite our best efforts to understand, the cosmos remains largely inscrutable. The Fermi paradox continues to challenge us, prompting us to question our place in the universe and the nature of life beyond our planet. The cosmos does not yield its secrets easily. It beckons us with its vastness, its grandeur, its silence. It compels us to keep searching, keep questioning, keep wondering, 